Audi 39 channel, welcome. Right, I'm out here in Japan, yeah, I've just picked up the new Nissan Z, or Nissan Fair Lady Z, I think most people are gonna call it. Uh, the brochure for it, look, it's a proper hardback book, and this one really stands out as the highest quality one because most of them are like just soft, soft back uh, little pamphlets, really, for all their K cars and their MPV things I really like over here. Uh, this one was proper hardback book, so it immediately feels quality, like they're, they're really hopeful they're gonna sell a lot of these cars and I'm sure they will because look at it what a beautiful thing this car is interesting to me it's like likely to be the last of the new cars that I'm ever going to be interested in buying because I'm not really impressed with electric cars I'm sure I, like, I do believe like we need to not rely on fossil fuels so much on planet earth but as for cars they don't interest me the electric ones so this one being petrol turbo powerful manual gearbox good looking i might seriously need to uh sell some bitcoin <laughs> and buy one <laughs> uh, but yeah i really i really love the design of it so that's why i wanted this brochure i went into nissan yesterday morning to to get it so let's just go through it this is a keeper i'm keeping this book and try and keep it in good condition First photo, nice composition. Obviously proud of their rear lights. Probably spent a lot of money developing those. They look really good. Big bridge, that's probably a famous bridge in Japan. I don't know the name of it. Um, I'm still not very good at reading Japanese, so let's just find out what this says. Probably some marketing bollocks. If you don't know this app yet, yeah, Google Lens is well useful. There is something, there is something you should never lose. To that end, face headwinds. Continue to resist further. The future will be visited only by what has been overcome. Fair Lady Z. <laughs> A very nice photo. Really shows off the shape of this car. I mean, everywhere I look over it, I really like the curves and the design, the way shapes sit with each other, like the headlight sits in that shape. Uh, you've got this kind of very gentle kink runs down the side of the car, so it's a really nice sideline. Uh, without that, it would look too rounded or too flat on the sides, uh, or just generally too rounded, and it turns into a bit of a blob, like, you know, like English cars we used to get in England, the Mark III Golf, the Mark IV Golf, a lot of hatchbacks, the Mark V Golf, Seat, Cupra, Audi A3, like all SUVs from all brands <laughs> from that era, just all blobs, just too rounded, nothing going on. And uh, I do think a lot of Japanese cars have gone too far the other way, like they're too angled, too many crinkles and sharp lines and it doesn't always work. This car, they've got it just right, a nice blend of muscular curves and sharp lines where they need to be. And you probably know they've got this, they call the Katana, which uh, I love that. Next page. Another photo. Full spread. Looks like they're parked in some sort of tunnel. Could be sunset. Sun reflection there. Looks like quite low on horizon. So we've got sunset light. Again, showing off all the curves and shapes. You've got that sharp kind of line there. Goes onto a flat section on top of the bonnet. Goes down the side of the car. Again, nice muscular curve. I really like the wheels. They haven't gone over the top too big. They haven't gone too low profile. Audi, are you paying attention? Uh, just right, they look sporty, but they don't look seriously uncomfortable. And uh, ride height as well. It looks like a sports car that's practical. They haven't gone too low. I'm a real big fan of lowered cars, but you gotta appreciate cars for sale to the general public. They've gotta be usable more often than not. So. Uh, yeah, they've got it just right with this one. Like the ride height looks sporty, but doesn't look too oddly high for this kind of car. Yeah, I like the big mouth as well. Like again, not overly aggressive. Looks kind of friendly to get in, like a car you can appreciate. Uh, not not having to feeling like you've got to go and attack the world with it. <laughs> so yeah, again, a lot of design. Oh, another photo. Same tunnel, I think, looks from the tiles on the wall. Uh, taking advantage of this nice sunset light. Uh, they've probably chosen this colour as well because it sort of shows off the uh, the shapes of it in the light. It's just such a good looking car. I really 
I can't think of a, a new car that's come out in recent years that I've been so sort of taken by. I really like it. Sort of a retro design. Well, it's not retro design. It's like taken cues from the old Fair Lady Z, the Z cars. Uh, totally modernising it really well. Just looks really good. It just looks exactly what it is. Like 400 horsepower. It's a really powerful car, really. More power than you need on a, on a public road. So you can certainly have fun with it. But it just looks friendly and usable. Now, I haven't really picked a fault in it yet. But another photo. Yeah, you can really see the wheels there. I uh, appreciate the wheels, the ride height. Again, looks comfortable to drive, but it looks like it's capable as well on a mountain road. Loads of mountain roads are really good fun out here in Japan. Looks like it'll be really good fun on them, like out of the box. But I'm sure if I had one, I'd drive it around normal for a bit and then I'd uh, have to lower it just a touch. It doesn't need a lot of doing to it. I mean, how often do you see a new car from the factory that you don't think immediately you want to make loads of changes to? So looking at the shut lines, looks really well made. A bit of a slash there. Got the katana there, slash there. It's all design. It's all flowing really well. Curves of the headlights matches the curves of the arches. Muscular curve there. You know, you can look at something, yeah, and you can sort of get a sensation of what it feels like. So when I look at this car, I feel like, like imagine washing it. Like, it would be really nice to put a wet sponge over that curve and then go across the door and then sort of back along here. It just looks like a nice car to touch. The mirror is big, so it's a practical mirror, but it doesn't look odd. It's kind of hidden there. I think it might be to do with its tinted windows and black roof and a black mirror. They sort of hidden it really well, because mirrors can be an odd thing on cars. Cool. Next page. Another photo. Come on. I haven't actually learnt a single thing about the car yet. We're just uh, we're just appreciating its design. So yeah, moving forward. A bit of motion in this picture. Not just parked up. It's got a bit of a, a chin sticking out, like really eager to go forward. Like you want to get in this car, it is actually for driving. It's not just a, it's not just a poser thing. Yeah, so next page. It's always interesting to see the people that car manufacturers choose to model their cars. This guy, look, he looks like, he doesn't look too Japanese. He also doesn't look like completely European or whatever. So he's kind of, I reckon he's like half Japanese. So it's understandable. They want to appeal to everyone and not alienate anyone. So yeah, it makes sense why they would do that. It is always interesting to think about why they chose who they did. Uh, looking at the interior. Yeah, it looks nice. Uh, like again, it looks like it's nice to touch, nice to hold that gear knob. Uh, all the materials look quite sort of tactile and long lasting. Uh, being Japanese, as long as you use things normally, they just last forever, all the electronics. on well, the older cars anyway. <laughs> Don't know about the newer ones. Uh, gauges. Maybe a nod to the aftermarket scene, kind of people that are going to want these cars. Even if not the people who buy them new, but the people who buy them second hand are going to want to raise the boost and whatnot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is cool having these pods and analog as well, not digital on a screen. I'm not a fan of like just everything on flat screens, especially buttons. I would much, much rather push a button than swipe across a screen. And I actually think it's actually a lot safer to actually have a sense of feel. So you can keep your eyes on the road a little bit and feel a button. On a screen, you can't do that. You've got to really look at where your finger is and what it's doing. So I think safer in a car to actually have buttons and switches just see a bit of the interior there it looks really good one thing does alarm me a little bit you can see that shiny black plastic bit there like me and my wife we're actually looking to buy a new car at the moment we've gone to toyota mitsubishi uh nissan as well looking at their like mpv things because uh, we've got a, a growing family so gonna get a family car cars mitsubishi were guilty of it they use this a lot in their cars and it looks so cheap yeah so i'm not a fan of this shiny black plastic i don't think they should ever have anything like full glossy on the interior because uh, not only does it look cheap, it feels cheap. And when you touch it, it leaves it like a greasy fingerprint or sweaty fingerprint really easily in the summer. It's going to look a mess. You're going to constantly have to keep wiping it. So I don't like that in cars. Uh, yeah, Mitsubishi had it a lot. Toyota was much, much higher quality, if you're interested, in their new cars. Um, cool, next page. All right, another photo, a bit more writing. That's a good photo. I like that. The old puddle trick. <laughs> 
Look at the design, got the Z badge, what they used to do years ago. You can see that katana blade, that's a really cool design. Just being Japanese and having a, a Japanese sword design on it. It's a real nod to themselves, a bit of nostalgia, a bit of patriotism. Something cool as well, you know, ninjas and that, <laughs> and deadly weapons. Uh, I like it, looking at that little spoiler. Uh, again, it's there. I mean, I can imagine it looking really good without that, but it is there and it looks good. I'm sure you're going to get aftermarket bigger ones like the Porsche 911 Ducktail and stuff going a bit taller towards the middle. Something you can play with and improve the look of the, the car. Exhaust outlet. I'm not a fan of these dots, little grooves they have around the exhaust. I had a TVR Tamora years ago. It had that. It wasn't my favourite thing. It just came with the car when I bought it. Uh, I'd much rather have just a sort of purposeful looking more motorsport, just like straight pipe or like what I put on my Bluebird yeah brakes look big behind the the wheels look I like the alloy design again tires look kind of comfortable they haven't gone over the top with being low profile I'm not a fan of really low profile tires they just look awful to drive and especially double especially when they put them on things like Range Rover Sports kind of off-road car and they've put like touring car race car wheels on them it doesn't make sense to me yeah just everywhere I look just really like it Bit of writing there, see what that says. Sometimes I close my eyes and jump in. Don't do that when you're driving. Sometimes fighting loneliness when you want to when you want the power to inspire your heart, you just need a sports car that you will love. I think I understand what they're getting at there. That's the kind of thing I would do. It's feeling a bit bored, just get in your car, just get on the mountain roads and enjoy it. Feel better about life. Another photo. It's a bit of a photo book really, isn't it? What a great photo. Love it. Only yellow and blue at the moment. I wonder what... The cars look cool in black, yeah? Practicality. They, as soon as it rains, they look dirty again straight away. So not so practical if you want to keep it looking clean and shiny. But black cars are cool. And if a car is really beautiful and nice design, it always looks really good in black. But... It does hide the design a lot. You have to look harder to actually appreciate the design. So showing off all these curves and stuff and the way the light bounces off different angles, uh, you kind of got to photograph a lighter color car. Um, a color as well, because silver or white, they get hidden again. So probably for that reason, that's why they're doing a lot of photography with a yellow car. Okay, bombing it for a tunnel. Somewhere in Tokyo or Yokohama, it could be. Can you see how the curves, you know, I was talking about the muscular curve there. It's a bit more hidden in this slightly darker colour. So the yellow does show it off a bit more, all the angles and curves and stuff. But if I, think, I think if I was going to buy one, I would go for one just like this. Black bits of trim, black roof, black mirrors, this blue colour. I'm a fan of blue cars and I literally never had one. All the cars I buy, you buy a second hand car, you lose a bit of power to uh, lose a bit of your ability to actually get a colour you want. You kind of end up choosing the lowest mileage, best condition one and then making do with whatever colour it is. Uh, another great photo showing off its stance there, looking a bit purposeful, a bit presence to it. Nice photo. I'm sure they work on these photos, like they take pictures, well, of course they do, and they tweak them, like they might enhance that reflection a little bit, and maybe if the shut line doesn't look too favorable to it, they'll tweak it a little bit. I'm sure a lot of that goes on. Cockpit looking nice. Light shining off there, Japanese model. I mean, she looks like she would drive an expensive K car, <laughs> but <laughs> no problem for her owning this car. I actually think it's really cool when you see like beautiful women driving cool cars. I really like it, especially on motorbikes and motorbikes. Motorcycling, yeah, I've got two motorbikes here, both big, powerful ones. I love it when I see women on powerful motorbikes because there's so much macho bullshit with motorcycling. I love it when men who just think it's a man's thing get a kind of kick or slap around the face because a woman's got a more expensive faster bigger more powerful motorbike than them love that 
showing off the silhouette. Same books here. They always fold up in the middle and they kind of ruin photos when you go across the centre of a book. Another Japanese model, I think it's the same lady. Doors open, we can see the shape of the door now. It's a good looking shape. Looks not too long, looks lightweight, has a frameless pillar. I still haven't really found a fault, it's just that shiny bit of plastic in the interior. It's the only thing I've picked a, a fault in at the moment so far. Really see the out, outline of the car there. It's just good looking. I've got. The... Is there anything wrong with this car? Looking down on it there, see the shapes on the bonnet. I think they've really got it right. Cars in motion, charging forward, a bit right in there, see what that says. How far can you run? Did you see the limit? Continue to challenge without getting tired. There is a soul filled by manipulating. <laughs> you lost me there, Nissan. What's that half, half Jap guy? He looks more Japanese there, maybe he's just Japanese. Showing off that back light again with a bit of exhaust smoke. Look at it there. Looks a bit different in that one. It's got that kind of Nissan 300ZX. In that video I did previously where I found those abandoned 300ZXs, uh, I think someone's bought that house where those cars were and there's a lot of fans there and stuff, so those cars may go. My wife said, is likely you'll just buy the house and your cars come with it. Um, but have you seen the prices of them? They've gone up loads. One car that shocked me is the Mark III Supra. That's just how much the prices of those gone up. Because I was looking to buy one and I wasn't going to spend more than like three, four grand. Uh, if I wanted to buy exactly that same car, it'd be more like 10, 12 grand now. Um, I do think there's a lot of people taking a piss, pushing the prices up more and more and more, and they, they just get in a bubble and then they just come down again. Is a sports car inconvenient? Is a sports car outdated? What is that? Real happiness is here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nissan. Get muddy, look, take it out when it rains, don't worry about it. So you should. Just go. Design, performance, heritage design. Should we read all this? Do you want to know what that says? There's a couple of QR codes there. Do you want to scan those? There you go. <laughs> Next page, a load more stuff about probably the instruments and how it works, a bit about the brakes and that. If you want to scan these, there you go. <laughs> Another photo moving forward. Oh, I've got some colours here. There's no black car. Don't tell me they're not doing black. What? Oh, there you go. Yeah. I think they do. So different versions, six speed, nine M eighty X. Is that a nine speed automatic, I guess? Blue with a black interior, the red enter. I'd have to go with very, very dark gray or black interior. I don't like things too black. So dark gray, dark colors in the interior. I don't like colors really inside. There you go, a few different versions of the cars, different specs. Say you're on blue. Body colour, yeah, there's black ones there, grey ones. I mean, I don't know why car manufacturers don't uh, just have like 25 different colours available. Because when there's only a few colours, you end up just choosing the one which you hate the least. It's not actually always what you want. Motorcycle manufacturers are really bad for it. They don't really offer any colour options at all on their bikes. Just, just silver, blue and black. Stuff about the, the uh, interior alloys there, 19 inch alloys. 19 by 9.5, oh, 19.10s on the back, nice, decent width. Can't stand it when cars, when wheels are really big diameter, but then really narrow so they could fit them in. Another QR code there if you want that. There you go, what was two? What's this? Length, 5.2 metres, got the weights there. Two 
two-wheel drive. They, they come with 18-inch alloys as well. I'm, I'm a fan of slightly small alloys. You get cheaper tyres. They just cars feel nicer as well to drive when they're slightly smaller, slightly higher profile tyres. I think they're overrated massive alloys with low profile tyres. What's that? VR... So what's that? Cylinder size? Engine size? 10.3? That's not 60 time. <laughs> I'm joking. That would be the compression ratio. That's quite high for a car, 10.3. Uh, obviously they squeeze the most amount of power they can out of a small engine. So it's a three litre twin turbo, got 400 horsepower. Yes, yeah, sounds like a, a can be a good reliable car. It's not overly, overly stressed and tuned up. Quality. Zed, some stuff about the people who produced it, I guess. Even when you see it from a distance, look, it's, you can tell it's a good-looking car. Can't fault it, mate, with the design. You look up close, there's just loads of things I like about it, looking around it, and then seeing it from far away, it's just general, overall, overall really nice shape. I think they're going to get a lot of sales. The original ones, yeah. This reminds me, uh, the, you know, I said I went with my wife to look at new cars, I went to Toyota. There's actually a friend of hers is the like, area manager. Is actually the guy who helped me buy Birdie, like sorted out all the shaken and the insurance and stuff, the road registration. Um, yeah, so we're sort of, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So we got taken around like special guest and they took us around the back. The owner of that dealership, he's collecting old Toyotas. So there was old Corollas, old Supras, uh, the Mark IV Supra, perfect condition, just all these cars, yeah. It breaks my heart, just all dusty, flat tyres, just not being used at all. It's like, why are you accumulating these cars and then just not caring for them? It's like you're stopping other people from owning them and enjoying them. Um, I mean, fair enough, collect cars, but you've got to look after them. I'm not saying you've got to get them all restored really beautifully, perfectly, but at least keep them, look after them mechanically. And at the point you've got, like, 12 cars, all worth a fortune, you can't even bother to keep the tyres pumped up. You shouldn't really have them. <laughs> That's my opinion. So, yeah. There you go, Fair Lady Z. Kids are gonna love it. Almost not overly in focus, like as digital photography. Yeah, it just went overly sharp, like just too stressful to look at. They've pulled back a lot, like modern photography now. Even though it's digital, still they've softened it a little bit. So it's a bit more nice to look at, a bit more pleasing on the eye. Uh, when things are just too enhanced, too sharp, it's a little bit stressy looking at them. Okay, cool. That was a, a nice book. That's a I'm quite happy with that. And then this come with it. it fell on the floor when I was moving it about. This will be your Nissan Connect. It's that all Bluetooth stuff. Maybe sat nav and phone connectivity. I'm sure you buy a new car, there's an app specially for it and it tells you where all the petrol stations are or whatever. And it's got infotainment, you can connect to it. I don't know, all these modern bollocks. Right, cool. There you go. Nissan Fair Lady Z. That's the new brochure. They've had a bit of a shake up in the brand because they're, they're not selling that many cars i really hope this brings them a lot more money because i'm a fan of nissan i'm always I've always been really uh really appreciative of their designs and i like i just like the cars and i've had a few in the past s14s and that um yeah good luck nissan with this car i can almost imagine me buying one <laughs> uh yeah cool thanks for watching